Off. Yep, so he's going into those ruts. So right there, get right into that rut. So he's getting a lot of wolves in the air because it's not a, uh, oh dang. Hello and thank you for tuning in to another episode. I will be starting a new series called Mastering Your Balls. And that stands for the break aid line lock system. I know what you're thinking. I know you ha you have a dirty mind, but this series has the best intentions. In case you're wondering, balls or break aid line lock system is a modification that adds solenoids to lock in your brake pressure. What this does is it's basically a brake line lock and it kind of acts like a locker. So if a wool gets in the air, it uses the brake to kind of lock that in place. And then you use just enough gas to where the wheel with traction kind of moves it at a similar rate as the wheel that is up in the air and has the brake supplied. But keep in mind, this is manually controlled. There's two buttons and you individually break the front left and front right wheel. And so that's why this series is called Mastering Your Balls because this is our second run over at the Hungry Valley State Vehicle Recreational Area. And uh, as you can see here, we're getting better at using the system. So here we go, split screen. We're gonna have two audio channels. The left screen will have the left audio. The right screen will have the right audio. So anyways, hope you enjoy this video. Um, I had to put something together pretty quick because I just didn't have time to do a lot of editing. So here you go. This basically took me 30 minutes to make this video. Uh, but it should be well worth your while. Enjoy. One thing to point out is that the Cayenne on the left is four-wheel drive and it has a low gear transfer case. So that is helping it get through all this. It also has a very advanced traction control system or brake vectoring system. Now the uh, Maverick FX4 is all-wheel drive. It has a two liter turbo engine and uh, it actually has a really good brake vectoring system, but it's open diff front and rear and so that's kind of what's hurting it so the center has a clutch pack that sends power front and rear the porsche cayenne is truly locked it has a center differential lock so what that means is it's not transferring torque front to rear it actually is locked in rotation front to rear that's a difference So one thing about the Maverick FX4 is that it literally has, well, its engine has cojones, its drivetrain has cojones. So now we're seeing Emmanuel K20 NART Pro. He's using his uh, line lock system actually on the fly. So he's actually breaking his wheels individually left to right. And look how effective that is. So the Honda platform, the IVTM platform, the Ridgeline Pilot and Passport is not open diff. It actually has a rear LSD. It's a mechanical LSD. It does have a front open diff and that's where balls comes in handy. The brake aid line lock system. If you could individually break the wheels, now it truly isn't open diff at all. So the front is is controlled by balls, then the center diff is controlled by clutch packs, and then the rear diff is controlled by twin clutch packs. So you're pretty much seeing the like whole entire uh, attempt 
by the Ford Maverick and the Ford Maverick you know it's open to front and rear but it's um, its sister the Bronco Sport Badlands has a very similar system to these IVTM4 Hondas it has a rear twin clutch differential but um, the awesome thing about it is we feel that it has a better brake vectoring system so in many cases we feel that the Ford Bronco Sport Badlands will do better um, you know just stock without balls obviously oh here I am okay so I'm giving this a go and um, this is you know I've I have enough experience with the ball system I'm trying to kind of break the wheels on the fly here let's see how I do I actually did pretty darn good in the beginning like right here I'm proactively engaging the ball system I'm breaking individual wheels and uh, and there you go I could definitely use more practice but um, this is probably the best display of me using the system now keep in mind that I'm carrying about a thousand at least a thousand more pounds of weight compared to the ridgeline also the ridgeline has modifications to increase its wool articulation so um, I actually um, a month after shooting this video I've installed the uh, a system to increase wool articulation only in my rear and uh, hoping to, to get around to increasing the travel of my suspension in the front in the coming month or so all the while Steven is getting spotted in his Ford Maverick and for open front and rear diff dude hands down Ford has I want to say like the best open diff all-wheel drive system right now is there's nothing out there like you're not gonna have a a, a Toyota RAV4 TUD off-road doing what that Ford's doing and you're also not gonna have uh, like the Subaru Wildernesses they're not gonna do that I think the Forester Wilderness will get close because it's geared better um, the Ford Maverick is still geared you know it, we're talking 16.7 versus 17.9 it's pretty close but um, the Ford does have a real 8-speed automatic transmission so you know gears are gonna kinda bite harder than a belt ever could as you could imagine yeah truly impressed by the Maverick um, especially since it doesn't have a fancy rear diff like our IBTM4 equipped Hondas and it doesn't have the ball system <laughs> By the way, we do not condone any of this rough driving on a vehicle like the Ford. So Stephen Emmanuel and Abel, they're all really close friends and they're very competitive and they all have the ability to fix cars. So they're not afraid to push it to the limits. Uh, I personally would not drive my Honda Passport like this. That's why I'm, you know, kind of taking it slow and easy as uh, you know, I I uh, I don't know how to pop in a new transmission or a new engine and so that's why I'm driving the way I drive I'm playing it safe now the Ford Maverick was getting um, all-wheel drive system hot warnings 
uh, they would only last for about like five to ten seconds and then it would go away um, it was really interesting because when those warnings would pop up then the, the vehicle would turn into a front wheel drive it, like so the uh, the rear diff would be decoupled completely until the heat warning went away so it would go into limp mode now if you're familiar with uh, with the Hondas what happens is you will get a heat warning there won't be limp mode but I'm pretty sure that if you keep pushing it it probably will eventually go into some kind of limp mode to protect itself but um, I never got that warning here because of the way I drive um, you know, there's no sense in spinning tires all crazy when you have a proactive traction control system like a twin clutch rear diff you don't need to do all that so I'm not getting these heat warnings. So Steven is just about up and I think we were all just so incredibly impressed that it made it up with open front and rear diffs. We all said that if any other all wheel drive could make it up that then we would give a $200 reward. Um, just because we're pretty confident that an open diff all-wheel drive just wouldn't be able to make it up. <laughs> um, so that would pretty much go for everything except for the Hondas and the Ford Bronco Sport Badlands. Uh, yeah, so I'll go review some footage. Um, I, I know we said it on camera, but you would have to take the same lines that we took where you're going into the dips. And uh, yeah, if you could get like a a RAV4, a Subaru, a Nissan, actually even a, uh, I think the Jeep, the Jeep uh, Trailhawk crossovers with the exception of the, uh, the Cherokee Trailhawk, I think those would qualify too because they're front and rear open diff. So that does it for this episode. Like I said, I didn't I didn't quite have as much time to make a full episode. Uh, you know, this thing just took me about 30 minutes, but I, I hope you enjoyed it. There's a lot that you could learn. And uh, anyways, till next time, have fun on your adventures.